we are back um, and are we in for a treat? Um, I had the pleasure of getting to do a town hall with um, this incredible woman just a couple of days ago and did it uplift my spirits. And um, yeah, I, everyone's gonna feel really pumped for this weekend after hearing, hearing from our next speaker who is the State Commissioner of Public Hand Lands, Hillary Franz. Um, she was elected in 2016 and she leads the Department of Natural Resources, an agency that manages 6 million acres of public lands from coastal waters and forests to commercial properties and farmland. This portfolio generates $325 million each year for our public schools and basic county services throughout our state. Through Hillary's leadership, the agency is developing a strategy for increasing revenue for our schools and communities through innovative strategic investments that protect working forests and farms in our rural areas and increase housing and economic opportunities in our cities. Hillary's Washington roots run deep. Her grandparents were cattle ranchers and small forest landowners, landowners in Pierce County. After getting a bachelor's degree from Smith College and a JD from Northeastern University, Hillary returned home to raise her three boys on a small farm on Bainbridge Island. Prior to being elected commissioner, Hillary served as executive director of the environmental nonprofit FutureWise and on numerous boards and commissions. She served from 2008 to 2011 on the Bainbridge Island City Council. Hillary is relentless in her desire to create bold transformational change here in Washington. And Crosscut summed it up best when they said she is the energy of a venti fuel, fuel dynamo and a mine that works at a wildfire pace. She brings passion to the lands and waters of Washington and a compassion for all of our communities. It's with great pleasure I introduce Hillary Franz. Thank you. Thank you, Shasti. It's, can everybody hear me? Are we good? We're all good? I know. I, all right. Thanks, Shasti. Okay. First, it is an honor to be here today and talk with you. I only wish I could be in person with you. I also want to thank all those who put this program together. Just looking at the panel and... Um, all the opportunities for us women to come together so that we can chart a new future, a bold future for women, for our daughters, our sisters, and for the future of our world. Um, I couldn't be more excited. So today I want to talk to you today about four agreements um, I have made with myself. And I will probably get pretty emotional in this speech, which is not usually my, my style, but um, I want to talk to you about four agreements I've made with myself, four agreements that have set me free from self-limiting beliefs that have limited my voice, my courage, my dreams, and my ability to create change. When I was eight years old, I became fascinated with politics, with policymaking and the ability to change lives, housing, environment, race and social justice, economy, education, and I became excited about elections. And I was fortunate to have a father who was involved in city government, uh, so I got to see it firsthand. But there was one leader, Ted Kulingowski of Oregon, who at the time was running for Senate, and uh, he would later go on to be governor. Um, and I told my father I wanted to work on his campaign. Now, I think back to this, and there was no woman running, so this wasn't me choosing between a man or a woman. There wasn't a woman running. Um, and my father, a city employee who was committed to politics, who had worked all his life in the halls of local government to create change and further democracy, agreed to help. So I began doorbelling. He and I would walk house to house. We would stop at each house and I would walk up the stairs by myself and knock on the door and make a pitch for why they should support Kulingowski for Senate. Picture it's kind of like trick-or-treating where your parent takes you door to door uh, and stops at the base of the stairs and you go it alone. Well, it was on those long all-day canvassing walks that my father held my hand for only the first part, but I had to go it my own, that at eight years old, I made a commitment to myself to run for office and work my life, my entire life for change. So being here today, you know, as the second woman commissioner of public lands, leading a 1,400 person agency in a very male dominated field of natural resources, energy, wildfire, it may not be a surprise to you given that eight year old dream. But I will be frank, it is very much a surprise for me. It has been a very long, circuitous 42 year journey for me to finally listen and follow the dreams of my eight year old self. We as women, as young girls, weren't born distrusting ourselves. We weren't born fearing ourselves. We weren't born silencing ourselves. 
our society did it. It was part of the taming of us young girls and women. If you think about it, society has trained us to criticize our bodies, our hunger, our passion, our curiosity, our judgment, our opinions, our experience, our ambition. We are trained at a very early age to lock away our true selves. I can remember in grade school, I got largely straight A's with the exception of music class. I cannot carry a tune for the life of me. If anybody knows Anna Boris, who's one of my team partners and drives the state with me, uh, she will attest I cannot hold a tune and she just doesn't admit it to myself because I already know it. But there was a column on my report card after the grade that changed who I am for a very, very long time. And then the title over that column said self-control. Yep, that's what it said, self-control. I was graded in every single class on self-control. And in every single class, I got NI, which means needs improvement. Sounds harmless, right? Needs improvement, but it wasn't. If I disagreed with a teacher, if I questioned authority, if I challenged an opinion, if I pursued an argument down every rabbit hole, I got needs improvement, needs improvement, and self-control. And that message that it sent to me from the age of six to 13 was extremely harmful. We're trained that good girl means sacrificing our voice, our opinions, our vision, and our dreams. When women lose themselves, the world loses its way. I'm gonna say that again. When women lose themselves, the world loses its way. We do not need more women silencing ourselves, waiting our turn, putting our dreams aside. We have climate change, a global pandemic, unbelievable patterns of racism at every single level of our society, income inequality like we've never seen before, a mental health crisis, homelessness, lack of funding for our basic needs of health, human services, and education. What we need right now is more women who have detoxed themselves from the world's expectation of what we should say, what we should do, and how we should behave. What we need right now is more women who are full of nothing but an unbelievable belief in themselves. So the first agreement that I have made to myself is this life is mine. So I have stopped asking people for directions or permission to go places they have never been or will never go. This life is mine, so I've stopped asking people for directions or permission to go to places they have never been or will never go. In 2016, my chance to fulfill my eight-year-old dream stood before me. The Commissioner of Public Lands position opened up 20-year environmental land use attorney who had worked throughout the entire state on much of the issues that the Commissioner of Public Lands is responsible for. And this position opened up, and what did I do? I froze. I woke up every single morning in a two-week time period of trying to decide whether I should run, one, believing I could do it and I should do it, and ending the day saying there's no way I could. My support group, my colleagues, people I had known and worked with, my advisors and even strangers everywhere told me I could not win. I had no chance. I'm a nobody. They said going up against six opponents, one a five-time King County Council member and five-time King County legislator with 20 years of experience and a well-known name, there is no way I could win. And I spent tw two weeks grueling trying to decide until my stomach couldn't take it anymore. And I sat down and I wrote on the back of a napkin, the pros of me running, the cons of me running. Now, the pros were you could tackle one of our greatest crises of climate change. You could address significantly the issue of economic development in majority of our counties that continue to face seven to 12% unemployment. You could address the context of homelessness in a new way because of the ability to manage and own land. Okay, the cons, you could lose. You could embarrass yourself, your family. And I called my mentor and I said, okay, we gotta make a decision. And I walked through those pros and cons. 
just as I did with you just now. And he said, Hillary, this is the easiest decision of your entire life. I said, what, how could that be? And he said, it is. The cons, those are all about you. This isn't about you, Hillary. This is about your ability to create transformation, transformative change in the state of Washington, in our communities, in a way that has never been done before and to bring your full breadth of yourself to them. And so I jumped in, as scared as I was, I jumped in. And on the campaign trail, I was surprised to hear things like, how could a little lady like you run a really big agency like the Department of Natural Resources and fight fires? I got, who's watching your children? Don't they need you? So my second agreement to myself, I will never ever again stay in a room, a conversation, a relationship, a job, an institution, a life that requires me to abandon myself, my voice, my ideals, my abilities, my courage, and my dreams. Say it again. I will never ever again stay in a room, a conversation, a relationship, a job, an institution, a life that requires me to abandon myself, my voice, my ideals, my abilities, my courage, and my dreams. Now, winning a campaign was just the commute to work. It was long in six months, but it was just the commute to work. Once you win, the true work begins. I knew nothing about fighting big fires, thousands of acres of fires, tough, arduous conditions, thousands of firefighters whose lives are on the line, communities whose homes and lives are at risk. When I took office, we were coming off the worst wildfires in Washington State's history. Almost 2 million acres burned in three years. We lost three firefighters' lives. And the agency I lead, Department of Natural Resources, stood DNR, stood for do not respond, do not resuscitate. We could not have a worse reputation with more at stake. And every single room I entered, I was the only woman. I needed to build confidence in the men and women who worked at the Department of Natural Resources, and I needed to build confidence in the millions of people whose lives were at risk. There is no playing around when you are dealing with fire. To make sure I didn't waste this moment, I didn't let my fears get the better of me, I didn't let people's attitudes limit me, and I didn't let myself limit me. I got a nameplate before I started that I placed on my desk from day one, and it says, do epic shit. It was to serve as a daily reminder to me that we have a limited amount of time on this earth, and we should not waste one minute second guessing ourselves or listening to others second guess us. And then I listened and I learned and I got to doing, going to work, doing what needed to be done. I developed in literally eight months the first ever forest health plan for Washington State that would truly transform the forests that we are right now seeing die before our very eyes. I developed the first ever wildfire strategic plan that brought local, state, and federal agencies together. A lot of gray-haired, silver-haired white men who'd been fighting fires forever, but never as a team. I developed the first climate resilience plan that's gonna set this state on a path to truly setting itself up to be more resilient to climate change and launched a bold initiative to transform that seven to 12% unemployment in a majority of our rural suburban communities. Now I remember back during the campaign and even after the campaign where I had fire chiefs from our, throughout the state, which they all largely do look alike, uh, silver haired white men, that thought I had two heads in brief fire that said, how could a little lady like you run a really big agency and fight fires like we have? And last year he introduced me to over 200 fire chiefs. And he said that he didn't have confidence in me when I first came on, that he didn't believe I was up for the job. And now after watching me for two years, he believes in his 35 years as a firefighter and chief, 
that I am the best commissioner of public lands that Washington State has had. So the third agreement that I made to myself is be brave enough to make things awkward, uncomfortable for yourself, for others, for you will wake us up, you will move us forward. Be brave enough to make things awkward, uncomfortable for yourself and for others, for you will wake us up and move us forward. As I move to my fourth agreement, I want everybody, if you can, grab a pen and paper. Grab a pen and paper or put it on the side of your computer. I want you to get ready. I'm going to ask you a question that I want you to remember. And I want you to hold on to. Put it in your purse. Put it in your wallet. Carry it with you. I'm going to ask you a question. And when you answer this, I want you to answer it from your gut. The gut is where all our courage comes from. Whether we are in a fight mode, whether we are in a bold mode, whether we are in a loving mode, all our answers come from our gut, not from our fears, not from what we think people wanna hear, not from what we think is possible or isn't possible. It's from our gut. Our gut knows us and we need to listen to our gut more. So I'm gonna ask you this question. I want you to answer with your gut response, okay? And write it down. If you could have any three jobs in the world, no matter what your abilities, like if I wanted to be a singer, I know I can't sing, I sing off tune, but I still may dream of being a singer. So no matter what your abilities, what would they be? Any three jobs in the world. Write it down. So in 2011, um, I was coming off uh, my first time in public office because it took me a long time to finally listen to my voice and believe in myself and actually trust that eight-year-old knew what she was thinking, dreaming, and wanting and knew her abilities. And I finally listened and I ran for a public office and I was a local government official, a city council member. And in 2011, I had the chance to run again as a city council member. I was also asked to run for the legislature by a number of leaders who had seen what I had done in local government. And I had to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was already almost hitting my middle age. And I was at a fork in the road, a crossroad, not knowing what I wanted. And it was extremely frightening. And I remember trying to figure out if I should run for the legislature, because this is my chance to fulfill that eight-year-old dream, or if I should do something else. And I sat down with a friend and for coffee who was much older and wiser than me. And they asked me the question I just asked you. And I answered with my gut. And my response surprised me. So I'll tell you what my response was. My first answer was governor. My second answer was interior secretary of the United States. And my third answer was Nina Totenberg. That told me immediately that I wasn't going to run for the legislature. Because if you look at both of the public official positions, they're executives. I knew immediately that I'm an executive. I could do legislator, I could do city council member, but I'm an executive. I was born to lead big teams, to build teams, lead those teams, set a vision, and work to implement that vision. And so I turned down running for the legislature knowing that it might be the last time I ever had a chance to be in public office again. I took the risk to follow my gut and know what my skills, my strengths, and what my best ability for creating change was. And so I tell you this to say, my fourth agreement to myself is, know who you are, know what you want, and go after your dreams. Know who you are, know what you want, and go after your dreams. Continually ask yourself that question, I asked you just now. Hold on to that so you remind yourself of who you are, what you want, 
and what your dreams are, regardless of what anyone else says you can or can't do, regardless of your own fears. So today I want to invite you to ask yourself, what agreements will you make with yourself? I've told you my four that I will never forget. I will hold true. I will share with every woman, young and old. And now let's go keep the agreements we have to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hillary. Um, it's always so incredible to get to hear you speak. And I think everyone is feeling so energized. And thank you for speaking your truth and just being honest about um, your journey. Um, uh, we did get a question about, you know, particularly, and you sort of spoke to this a little bit, but, it, but young women, when they're first starting out, like growing that confidence and then making that decision to run for office. Um, do you have any advice that you can give or kind of remembering what that those early days kind of felt like? So the early days, I would first say is one, believe in yourself. I mean, I think the four agreements and I can get the four agreements to Shasti so you can send out to people. Those are mine. They don't have to be yours, <laughs> but I got to tell you, I wish I had known those at 10 years old. I wish I'd known them at 20. I wish it didn't take till I was almost 50 to know them. But I think first is believing in yourself. You're going to hear, especially young women, they're going to say, it's not your time. It's not ready. You're going to hear from women who will also limit you. Trust me, the, the one that said, who's watching your children? That came from another woman who was a former legislator who was urging me not to run for office because I would be abandoning my children. And I think the reality is, um, listen to your voice, believe in yourself. Every day is an opportunity to learn. You're not gonna get everything right, but you are going to learn as you go. And so don't be afraid of that learning. Don't be afraid to jump in and run for office. And even if you lose, there's no such thing as losing. There's no such thing as mistakes. You get back up again and go, wow, I just learned an enormous amount about myself and about the next race I run for. Um, I would urge you also to find mentors and make sure they're mentors. Make sure these are the people that are going to be your greatest cheerleaders and greatest advisors when it gets really, really tough and really, really scary and it's 2 a.m. and you just wanna cry or scream or throw things, call, they're the ones you can put on your lifeline. Um, I'm here for any woman who wants to run or is thinking about it or any woman who's trying to figure out what they wanna do with their life, whether it's in politics or something else. I'm here, you guys have my information. We as women need to be mentoring more women. We need to be friends to more women. We need to be advisors to more women. We need to be cheerleaders to more women. Sometimes we are our worst enemy and frankly, we got too many fucking enemies already out there. I, we don't need to be our own selves enemies. So, all right, sorry for the swearing, but you know, sometimes bold language needs bold action, needs bold everything. <laughs> Epic shit. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, Amber is putting up um, the slides that has your information. So if folks have further questions, they want to um, support you, they can go to info at hillaryfrans.com. And uh, you got a, uh, an election this cycle, so I'm sure um, you could use all the support, and we're right here backing you all the way. Yeah. So, Thanks, thank you. Mom. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.